I'm sure you would have come across some of the leaders that have made a huge mark on you and you still admire them. You want to be in their company. You want to be just like them and you want to learn a lot from them. And I'm also sure that there are certain leaders that you don't want to be near to them. You'd never want to work with them. You never want to see them. You never want to talk to them. And do you know what is the difference? The difference between these two types of leaders is that people who have made impact, those who have made you feel important, those who have been able to show authenticity, uh, trustworthiness, and those who have helped you in giving and instilling confidence in you in your development are those people whom you really love to work with. Now, today in this video that I'm going to talk about is something very unique and very, very relevant and useful in your leadership journey. And what we are going to learn today is what are the phrases that most of the successful leaders use very, very frequently and very, very often. Because if you know what are those phrases and when to use them and which situation to apply them is going to be detrimental for your team development as well as your own leadership profile to grow up. Because as a leader, your core role is to develop and create more leaders. It's to motivate, encourage, and inspire people who are working with you, around you, and reporting to you. In order to make them feel more confident, make them feel more uh, empowered, a lot of leaders have got a typical behaviors in terms of the phrases and the language that they use very often and this is what I'm going to take those 21 phrases that I have chosen out of the so many phrases that are going to be relevant for your learning and then you need to practice it as you move forward. So if you are with me, uh, let's get there. But before that, I again want you to like and subscribe this channel, uh, learn a lot of content that is coming your way and let's move together to see what's coming up on this slide. Number one is, what do you think? Now, let's think of certain situations where you come across people who wants to contribute. You want to take people in confidence as a one-on-one -on -one with them. So you include them. You make an inclusiveness by simply asking them, what do you think? What will work? What do you think will not work? Imagine if suppose somebody is asking this, what it tells that you value their opinion, you value their input, you value their time. And that's what these leaders use very often. That is, what do you think? Next is, I trust you. Now, imagine that a subordinate came to you and he's narrating the initiative and the action that he has taken to achieve or to do a particular task, but he could not do it. Imagine as a leader, if you say, I trust you, I trust your action. I trust you 100%. Whatever you are doing is going to work or not work, but I am standing with you. I trust you. It's such a powerful phrase that can boost the confidence of anyone who is around you who is listening to you, who is following you. The next is, I don't know. When I say this particular phrase, I don't know, or when a leader says this, what it simply means is that the leader is very authentic. If he doesn't know, he doesn't know. Many a times, leaders tend to make a mistake. They tend to show that they know everything, as if they are Superman. But the true, authentic leader would admit that I don't know. Maybe I would love to know from you. I have never heard of something like this. So it's acceptance. It's like, it's like being open heart to heart that I don't know. A lot of leaders, because of their ego, they avoid or they tend to show that they know everything in every situation, in every meeting, they have something to contribute. But acceptance of by saying, I don't know. <clears throat> Next is, I'm glad you are on our team. It clearly shows that when a subordinate or a teammate comes and does something outstanding because of his talent or because of his effort, because of 
whatever by virtue of it he or she is able to improvise the process you instill that confidence in that person by saying i am glad you are on our side or i am glad that i have you in my team imagine if you make this statement to anyone what impact that will have that the person feel honored the person feel associated connected with the leader next is my vision is a lot of leader when they use this language my vision is or our vision is to go at this level it clearly shows that you have a long term plan you have a dream in your mind you have an action plan in your head that you want to achieve let's say my vision is to become the number one player in a particular given area or in a particular given segment and that's how you inspire people by using this word very often my vision is that each one of you reach to a level where you can achieve more dream more and do more next is my expectations from you are now what you are saying here by meaning this that i want you to bring your best and i'm giving you that opportunity so many a times in a situation where a leader or a subordinate is not sure that what to do in a in a ambiguous situation or when there is lot of uncertainty when a leader comes and says see my expectation from you are 1 2 3 it clearly instills lot of confidence in that person that what my leader is looking for i have personally seen lot of people making a statement and say i don't know what my leader really wants sometimes he says you do this sometimes he says this he's always confused but when the leader is saying that my expectations from you are this 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 he is actually either provoking you or making you prepared that what he is expecting from you and the expectations are becoming clearer to both the sides and that's the quality of a great leader next is you can do it i believe in you sometimes when a new task or a project is very complicated or complex which involves various stakeholders various situations sometimes the subordinates reflect a body language where they exhibit some doubt or they have some anxiety before going into a bigger project mm -hmm. and that's where great leaders put their hand on the shoulder and say you can do it because i believe in you you can do it because you are the one whom i have trusted upon this one statement can make that person to give their best their best try and use this in situations when there is ambiguity the next is thank you a lot of leaders forget to say thank you to their subordinate because they feel that this is a routine work that they are doing but again taking time taking attention and looking into the person eyes and when you say thank you it means a very genuine thank you in doing a particular task it also shows that you respect others their time their effort the in in bringing a particular results so use thank you very very often when people are finishing their task or they are going an extra mile in achieving those given objectives number 9 is tell me more i'm sure in my previous videos you would have seen many times that i have talked about that leaders have great listening skills and great leaders use this phrase tell me more that means they are encouraging you to speak more which also means that they have got good listening skills tell me more now the moment somebody says tell me more your enthusiasm your energy goes to the next level that your leader is ready to listen to you he is ready to feel you he is re ready to accept you he is he is the one who is more empathetic and that's where the emotional intelligence level also goes high next is how do you think we can improve now imagine you are trusting somebody to a level that you are seeking their involvement and engagement so use this particular situ uh, phrase in a situation where you are either short of ideas or you feel that you have to include others into the discussion and then you tell them that i want everybody to come together and tell how we can improve 
that means you are trusting your subordinates, you are trusting your team that they will come up with some suggestions or ideas that can help you to do better. And another very important thing is I made a mistake. Leaders who are highly egoistic, highly successful, highly arrogant, they hardly accept that they have made any mistake. They feel that they are right, they are correct, and they cannot be corrected. That's where a lot of people say that this person has a very high ego. But the leaders who are grounded, who are looked upon, who are getting influence, they say, I made a mistake. So use it appropriately, particularly in situations when there is a failure. Accept it on behalf of everybody. Rather than blaming A, B, C for the failure, say, it's my mistake. And that will raise your bar to the next level. People will look up to you that you are the one who is taking the blame of failure and giving the share of success to everybody if it is a success. This is a sign of a great leader and that's why they use this phrase very, very often. I hope you are liking this content and if you really feel that this is making uh, value to you, please give me a thumbs up or share your thoughts on this. The next is, let's figure it out together. So this is something like how do you think you can improve? But here you are again instilling the confidence, let's figure it out together. Which means, let's say that there is a situation where you are short of ideas and you are not sure what to do, or the person has come to you and he said that he could not find a solution to the problem or he could not get a new way to move forward. And you said, let's figure it out together. Let's sit shoulder to shoulder together. Let's huddle together. That's the sign of a leader. and. Imagine if you are a subordinate, you feel more closer to the leader. Because one important thing that a lot of people, when they look up to the leader, they need their face time. And to get that face time, you need to get into those talks that helps people to feel closer to you. Because if you say, let's figure it out together, that means you are very close to that person. With this powerful statement, use it appropriately. Next is point number 13. My success comes from my team. Such a bold statement, you know. A performing team and a performing leader, when they stand out in receiving the award, they normally use my success comes from my team. That means they are again giving the credit to the team. But as I said, when they say I made a mistake, they take blame and failure on themselves. That's the that's the broad mind of a leader. They are not loner. They are not thinking about themselves. They are thinking about people around. Because that's the core role. That's the core role that how do you develop? How do you motivate? How do you inspire people? And that's where they say that my success comes from my team. Next is, I appreciate your time. Or I appreciate you. It clearly shows that you value people. You value their time. You respect people. It's not that they are just available and you just call them and they're always ready to say, yes, sir, what can I do for you and all that stuff. No, even their time is very precious. A lot of leaders who are very humble, they are grounded and they normally use this term, I appreciate your time. Thank you for making yourself available at that juncture and it made a lot of difference. Particularly use this particular phrase when you have seen that somebody has gone out of the way, leaving his family uh, or spending an extra time in finishing a particular project or coming all the way to meet you to uh, discuss a particular report, which could have been done even remotely or could have been done by sending uh, an email. But when people come to you and they talk to you, always give that respect that I appreciate you or I appreciate your time. Next is, I need your help. How many times you have seen a leader going and talking that I need your help? It's like being humble. It's like going one level down, touching the ground and standing at that level. A lot of leaders don't have this phrase in their pocket because they feel that they are 35,000 feet above. And that's why people say, you know, we don't connect with our leader very well. But if you say, I need your help, and with your right tone that you use, people will feel connected with you because they know that their leader needs you. 
and that's why he trusts you. This is another sign of very strong emotional intelligence that you are humble and you need people to work together to solve a particular problem. Next is, I believe you. I think we have used this in the past that I believe in you. I repeat this because that's a very powerful statement that keep coming. I believe in you. I believe in your abilities. Keep doing a good work. Even if you fail, face failures, I'm sure this statement is very frequently should be used, particularly when your teammate is not getting success in spite of various efforts and methods applied. And you say that I still believe you because you're doing the right thing. You're taking an effort. You are actually uh, rewarding a behavior where a person is not giving up. And the best way of recognizing is by saying, I believe in you. I trust you. Do it. Go ahead. Next is, what do you need from me? Now, many a times that you see that your teammate is not successful. He's still not getting a way out. And giving this phrase that, what do you need from me, is something that you are showing that I am totally available to you. Talk to me anything. You want to burst out your emotional outburst. Talk to me anything. And you become a good listener. And that's where you give this statement. What do you need from me? To make you successful, what do you need from me? That shows the leader is entrusting a lot of trust on the individual to deliver better and bigger. Next is, let's try it your way. Use this particular phrase when you see that uh, the existing methods are not working and somebody is raising their hand and saying that, I have an idea, I have an idea. And, and, and then, you know, you listen to that idea, but don't give any further ideas to that. Let's say somebody has come with an idea that how we can improvise the time or the efficiency of our delivering reports. Now, don't add anything that, you know, I have, can you do two more things? Don't do that. Simply say, fantastic. I think your idea and your thought process is very clear and let's try it your way. Imagine if you say something like this, what will happen? The person will feel elated that my leader trusted me. My leader is very authentic. My leader is very transparent. He is open. I can always go and talk to him. But the moment you add those two cents to the whole thing, now his idea is your idea which he has to implement. Doesn't work. Next is, this conversation has made me feel elated. This conversation has made me feel more confident that you can do it. Now, what you are telling that person is that I trust you and I really look forward to you. So use this uh, when you have a very important conversation on a particular decision that you have to make when the group has come together with a lot of ideas and they want to take your time. And then you say that this conversation has made me feel that you are all ready to go for a win. That motivates people. That's where people feel elated, inspired to take action. The next is, I really don't have an answer right now. Now, some of you may feel that, you know, this is a very statement which is like giving up. No, it's about that a leader is not sure what to say rather than to acknowledge something. So I really don't have an answer right now. Let's figure it out together. Let's give it some time. So use it particularly when you are not sure what is the outcome of a decision that is going to take place. It doesn't show that you are ambiguous or you are undecided. It also shows that you are transparent and you are open to your team. Because the more you are open to your team as a leader, the more they will know you and your taste. So that also shows that you are not always in hurry to take decisions. You are not always hurry to pass the buck. You are not the person who says, I know everything. You are saying, I need some time to think, then I will come back. And the last is, when you tell somebody, that's really a good observation. You are patting somebody. Let's say that Everybody was following up on a, on a case or on a project and somebody came out and brought a superb analysis of the situation and that which could have led to a big decision. And when you tell that person that that's really a good observation, 
it made a lot of difference. It has made a difference. The person will feel elated. The person will feel excited. The person will feel enthusiastic in achieving. Well, these are some of your 21 phrases, which I personally liked a lot. And I thought of sharing it with all of you. And I hope this video would have given you some insights about what great leaders do repeatedly, very often when they want to achieve some bigger goals in their life. And that's how they become an inspiring leader. They become a leader that people look up to because they use these phrases very often in engaging their team. So what are you waiting for? Choose some of those actions. Look at those situations where it needs to be used appropriately and use it as much as you, you can. Well, thank you very much for watching me. And I hope if you like this video, do share your feedback, do write your comments below in the comment section. I will personally look into it. Or if you want to write me back, please feel free to write me on arun.rupral at hcnconnect.in. I really appreciate your time and patience in watching this video. Thanks a lot.